Today we're going to be looking at the generational trends that are shaping the future. In sociology, we're looking at broader macro trends, demographic shifts, evolving cultural norms. We're capturing the story of a shared culture, how it moves and changes, evolves, and what that can tell us about the workplace and marketplace. So I do want to just get it started on the ground level to look at who the generations are today because we'll be using this language to explore some of these trends. Boomers grew up, there was 80 million, it was a large generation in American history, we had the bull market of the 60s behind you and the world looked at boomers and said, if anyone's gonna change the world, it's you and it's now. And so there was this optimistic and idealistic youth culture. By 1961, the median man between 25 and 29 years old was making about 400% more than his father made at that same age. And even though boomers were very young at that time, it was that economic engine that led them into adolescence. I bring that up because as we look at the other generations, understanding that economic backdrop that you grow up with can shape some of your views moving forward. So the biggest events and conditions that I look at with Gen X, 1980, Ted Turner put CNN on the air. Good evening, I'm David Walker. And this is the start of the 24-hour news cycle. So these institutions that were built by traditionalists and improved upon by baby boomers, they were all being called into question in front of your 12-year-old eyes in your living room. During the formative years of Gen X, you remember one president saying, I'm not a crook. And another president saying other things. Gen Xers became very skeptical. By the time the average Gen Xer was 20 years old, you had watched 23,000 hours of television. And you couldn't fast forward through commercials, you couldn't binge watch anything. You were being sold to constantly as teenagers. And advertising then doesn't have the same regulation as it does today. So this was like the wild west of advertising. The average age of a C-suite executive in America is 56 years old, and that's how old Gen Xers are turning this year. So in addition to all of the changes that the workplace is going through right now, there is also this generational changing of the guard. And with that, I'm gonna go into the millennials. Biggest events and conditions that we look at with millennials, millennials were there at the dawn of social media. It was ad-free, it was adult-free. When we look at 2011, which kicked off with Occupy Wall Street and ended with the Arab Spring, we see this era where there was a lot of experimentation being done about what are we supposed to do with this megaphone? What is its power? 15 years ago when millennials first came into the workplace, there was so much conversation about these young people and they want to have a seat at the table and they want to have a voice at such an early stage. And if you pay attention to changes that happen in the domestic, sphere, it becomes much easier to predict what could happen in the workplace because when families became more collaborative, when they became less authoritarian, we moved away from children should be seen and not heard to an environment where there's this premium on youth voices, you could see how that could create some different norms in the workplace many years later when millennials came in. So, Gen Z, our current moment is the backdrop of their formative years. And a new generation comes in and they have a different vocabulary being used to describe their reality. It shapes that reality in which they are living. One way that it impacts the workplace is we have this therapeutic language that is now being used to describe workplace experiences. Boundaries, gaslighting, toxic cultures, burnout. When we think about the future of the workplace, the fundamental piece that is at the core of well-being and work-life balance is it's this question of what am I willing to sacrifice? I think that will dictate a lot of what we see next. When we think about the future of work, I think really using this moment to look at our processes, our procedures, our norms, ask ourselves, what in this is optimal? What needs to be optimized? How can we make this more perfect, more useful, more effective? And I hope if you take one thing away from today, it's that it's not about right or wrong or better or worse. Every generation brings something unique and important into our culture. And it's up to visionary leaders, strong leaders, to leverage those differences to create these communities that really benefit all of us.